1923, French physicist Louis de Broglie said, If light has a wave and particle nature, then why can't particles, such as electrons, have a particle and wave nature as well? Soon several experiments ensued that showed electrons also have a wave-like nature. Here we have an electron diffraction tube and set power supply set up. This will show that electrons can be diffracted by a graphite crystal and will be visible because of a fluorescent screen. First we will turn the accelerating voltage up and immediately you can see a green spot on the screen in the top left corner. This is from the electron setting the screen and causing it to fluoresce. If we turn up the accelerating voltage more, you begin to see the rest of the screen fluoresce. This is from more electrons hitting it faster and at a higher kinetic energy. A 50 volt power supply is used on top of the accelerating voltage, which is used to fine focus the diffracting electrons. This dimming effect is because of the focusing using the 50 volt power supply. We continue to increase the accelerating voltage and also fine focus it with the 50 volt power supply on top. We hope to see rings form here in a few minutes. And if you look closely at this moment in time, you can just begin to see the formation of rings. We increase the accelerating voltage more and more and we also find focus more and more. Finally we get to where we can see three rings very easily. These rings are also called orders. There are two methods to find the wavelength of an electron. Method one would include using the conservation of energy and de Broglie's relation. Method two would include using right triangle trigonometry and Bragg's law. The numbers we receive from this experiment are as follows. The accelerating voltage is equal to four and a quarter keV. The radius of the third order is two centimeters. The graphite crystal lattice constant is 0.213 nanometers. And the length from the graphite crystal lattice to the back of the bulb of the electron diffraction tube is 11.5 centimeters. Using these numbers, you can come to within 5% agreement between the two methods. Here we have a magnet commonly known as a cowpill. It is often used to collect excess metal that could have been ingested by the cow. We will use this permanent magnet to show the effects of a magnetic field on an electron beam. As you can see there, when you put the magnet close to the beam, it has a pushing or pulling effect. If you approach the beam with one end of the magnet, it will have a pushing or pulling effect. And if you flip the magnet over, then you will see that it has the opposite effect, which poses the question, does the north end push or pull the beam, and does the south end push or pull the beam?